As a former Navy SEAL, Clint Emerson has been all around the world. Why are you making that stupid face? It's very cold. Huh? It's very cold. <laughs> Number one, cross enemy borders by sea. So this is pretty cool. Uh, you basically just approach the coast in a helicopter and jump out in your swim gear and everything else you need fixed to your body. <laughs> I like the <laughs> I like the condom taped to the muzzle of the gun to keep it dry. I didn't think that would work, but uh, I'll take Clint's word for it. I thought the uh, I, I thought the water would be a problem for the ammo, so I looked it up, and no, apparently bullets are pretty waterproof, especially military calibers. They're um, coated in a special kind of sealant or something. You also need to make sure the helicopter is pretty close to the water. I assume the main reason is so that you don't break your fucking legs or something. But if Grand Theft Auto has taught me anything, it's that you need to fly low to avoid radar detection, and that that is one of the worst things you'll ever fucking do in your life. What is this? Then you just swim to shore, get changed, and bury your swim gear and anything else you might need to come back to later. Number two, cross enemy borders by air. Well, the last one was kind of by air as well, but this one involves you jumping out of a plane and parachuting to land. <laughs> it seems to suggest that you are the sole traveler of this plane, and when you jump out, you kind of just leave the plane to its fate. So I guess this really is like Grand Theft Auto. You want to make sure the plane is level with the ground before you jump out and that it's heading out towards sea or a rural area so it doesn't attract any attention when it comes to a crash. Then once you're on the ground, you want to get changed, melt down your parachute and wingsuit and bury the remains. Number three, cross enemy borders by land. This one's not quite as exciting. Actually, it uh, kind of sounds like a fucking pain in the arse. You're just crossing the borders through difficult terrain. If you're lucky, you might be able to manage on a cross country motorbike and then you can lug all your shit on that. But you're probably gonna end up walking at some point. You should travel at night and sleep during the day, making use of improvised shelter. You also want to make sure that the surface you're working on is not going to leave behind tracks like, you know, mud, snow or sand. Or if you have to cross this kind of terrain, you should wait for some weather that will cover your tracks like rain or a blizzard or something. Number four, conceal gear using caches. Keep your things where people aren't going to find them, basically. You know all the stuff that you're going to want to keep around you, ropes, fishing hooks, tools, food, all that kind of stuff. If you saw the list of shite in the last video, you know you won't be able to carry all that stuff around you the whole time. You can keep your stuff in anything that will keep them safe and dry. Clint shows off a water bottle and a PVC pipe for examples. Shape of that pipe is giving me very nasty flashbacks from the last video. The real fun of this skill comes in the hiding. Tie a line to your cache on a tree and fuck it in a lake. Bury it and mark it on your GPS, put it in a hollowed out tree trunk, hide it in some roadkill. <sighs> Don't do that. Number five, hook and climb a target structure. Okay, this is the most questionable thing I've seen in this book so far. First, you have to tie this mystery material into some weird lather kind of thing. I say mystery material because it's not disclosed what this is. And I, I, I can't figure what this is. Right, it's got to be fairly sturdy, because it's got to take your weight, okay? Right, that's, yeah, that's okay. That's fine. But it's also got to be relatively skinny, I guess, like it is in the picture, right? Because you need to be able to, like, se tie secure knots and be able to get your hands and feet in all, you know, in and out of all the loops, you know, easily. So it's got to be of a size that you can like easily grab. It also needs to be long as fuck. Clint says it needs to be like more than double the length of whatever it is you want to climb. The example he gives is a structure of 30 feet, which requires 60 feet of whatever this stuff is made out of. So what is it? Uh, what could it be? Like it can't just be bed sheets tied together, right? Like that wouldn't work. Am I am I wrong about this? <laughs> am I am I crazy? Is it rope? Are you just talking about rope? Like I can understand rope, but that's not rope in the picture. That is, that's definitely not rope. Also, I don't know how he's tying this thing together. Like, okay, I'll, I'll believe that you, you can physically 
uh, do that. Well, m maybe I can't do that, but you know, someone like Clint can probably do that. But there's no way that's going to be like easy to do. And I have to say, if Clint made me one of these, there'd be absolutely zero fucking chance that I would climb up it. It's going to be straining under your weight. The whole thing is going to be like twirling and shaking in the air, just trying to climb it. So the, the loops in the pictures look nice and spacey, you know, that looks relatively okay to climb, you know, you can easily grab those. But in real life, those are just going to slink under the force of gravity. They're just going to be flush with the line. You're not going to be able to see you know, what you you need to grab onto next. You're not going to be able to, like, it, that's not going to be easy. Unless you make, like, rungs out of all the, uh, all the loops, like he shows in the pictures. But, I mean, even if you were to make, like, rungs of all of them, this thing is 60 fucking feet. Like, how many rungs are you going to have to build? And it's all, like, tied together, so you're going to have to work these rungs in as you're building it. This thing is fucking awful. So, after all the hassle of making this fucking thing, how do you get it up to where you need it? Well, you just hook it onto a painter's pole. Where'd you get the painter's pole? If only there was some other tool commonly used by painters to allow them to ascend to heights out of their reach. Number six, scale a high wall. This is pretty much the exact same thing, except with some other kind of nothing fuckery. I'm not even going to entertain this one. Number seven, blend into any environment. To blend into any environment, you have to be self-aware and conscious of the things going on around you. Basically, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You need personal awareness, cultural awareness, situational awareness, and third-party awareness. You should be like a chameleon, changing and adapting to suit your surroundings. This is very cleverly illustrated in the book, with a man doing the exact same fucking thing in every situation he's in, so well done. Number eight, hotel security and safety awareness. Okay, we're getting to the really cool spy shit now, so when you're in a hotel, you should be mindful the place could be bugged. Clint says Westerners are regularly pushed into rooms that are pre-wired for listening and watching, which is a fairly Bold claim, but yeah, okay, maybe, you never know. You should never get a room above the third floor as most countries' fire brigades don't have ladders that reach beyond that. It's a shame they don't have painter's pole technology. Your room should be equidistant from different escape routes. If your room is right by the stairs but far away from the elevator, then an attacker is just going to come from the stairs and now you're kind of fucked because the only other escaped is far away. Speaking of elevators and stairs, you should use them at random, so don't use the elevator every time you leave. Switch it up, keep your routine irregular and unpredictable. You can even go so far as to change your room or even the hotel. Number 9. Prevent a hotel room invasion. Simple concept, you block every entry to the door. Your method can be simple or unorthodox, but the objective is the same. Stop an intruder from gaining entry. Whether you're in the room facing an attack or you're away and your possessions are at risk, the last thing you want is for someone to manage to open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. <laughs> Number 10. Conceal belongings within lodgings. Once again, more fun with hiding things. I love this stuff. It's like a big game where you have to be as creative as possible. Hide things in the hems of curtains, behind electrical fittings, inside the shower curtain rod. Ooh, that's a, that's a good one. Also, if someone could let YouTube know where they hid my application for monetization. That would be great. It's been a few months now since I met all the requirements, so what are you doing? Where is it? Anyways, I'd like to thank Clint Emerson for writing this book. You know, it's a, it's, it's just a fun book. It's an interesting read. You should go buy it, throw him some money there. And uh, you know, while you're throwing some money around, I should mention that I have a Patreon now. So I haven't really put much thought into it. Uh, you don't. You don't get anything, I don't know what I'm going to do with it in the future, if anything. But if you've ever thought to yourself, geez, I'd like to give this guy some money for absolutely nothing in return, you can now do that. You now have the ability to uh, just throw your money into a big black hole. You know, it's not like I'm uh, making any money from this. You know, I'm out here on YouTube, you know, grafting heavy, bringing in the traffic and... Uh, what, what, what do I get from that? Absolutely nothing. Like, uh, sorry YouTube, but like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you at? You know, from the last I heard, you're six months behind on the approvals process. Six fucking months. How?
how all you have to do is click a fucking button i tell you what i would love that job okay like first of all i don't think anybody's fucking doing it anyway so the position must be fucking open right like, like, like what other job what other job could you have where all you have to do is press a button and you're still six months behind on that what other job could you do that and still be gainfully employed like Is there more to it than that? Like, am I not aware of something? Like, I wish you would just tell me, like, what's going on. Because when I first met all the requirements, you told me, you know, you usually send it out in about a week. Okay, it's been, like, I don't know, three, maybe four months or something, like, since I've met that. And now you've updated the thing, saying it usually takes place within a month. It's been a month. You Okay, first of all, you had the fucking gall to change the website.